good morning and welcome, welcome to SBC this morning. It's great to be able to welcome you, welcome you as we begin into a new term, as we begin into a new month, as we get the sunshine back, because I know some of you do it soon at school this week, so that always kicks the uh, sunshine off as well. So it's a very warm welcome to you all who've come to the building and those who are joining us online as well. And uh, a very warm welcome to you if you're here for the first time. Uh, if you didn't get a welcome pack, please do see us at the back. We've got a welcome pack there for you. And do stay with us afterwards for tea and coffee and a chance to chat together. We'd love to do that with you and uh, say hello. And a real warm welcome to us here at SBC. My name's Pete. I'm the pastor here at the church. And it's great to be able to welcome you in the name of the Lord. Just bear with us. We're going to do a few notices before we begin our service. Uh, just a reminder that our prayer ministry team are starting again uh, back with us. And so if you'd like prayer for something this morning, uh, they'll be there in that corner under the screen after the service. Come and join them there and they will pray for you and bless you in that way in the name of the Lord. So prayer ministry team available after the service this morning. Tonight, we're going to be meeting together for our first deeper of this new session and so uh, come and join us. We're looking at the problem passage of Isaiah 34, verse 14. And if you don't know what that is, well, come tonight and you'll find out. We'll be on Zoom as well for those who want to join in from home. We'll also be thinking a little bit about creation and the creation account in Genesis as well uh, around that theme. A couple of things coming up. Reminder to say to you, if you uh, don't know what the general pattern of things are, if you'd like to give us your email address, we'd love to add you to that list, and we send out a, a link uh, every week and tell you what's happening in the week, so you can do that. You'll find details as well on the website, so that reminder as well for you. Lots of things beginning to restart as we get back into the new term for our community groups, our youth groups, uh, and our connect groups, so Keep your eye out for that as well. One of the things that's restarting is toddlers this week. And so if you would like to help in terms of providing a cake for toddlers, well then please uh, add your name to the list downstairs. Okay, it's on the toddlers board by the kitchen. So please add your name to that. That would help us as well uh, for providing cake on a Thursday for toddlers. That would be great and fantastic. Notice as well, there'll be a church walk for those who'd like to join in. Anyone would like to join in on the 23rd? I have a few more details about that nearer the time we join together for that. Next Sunday, we're going to be back into our Immerse series. We're going to be looking at the prophets, uh, those books of the prophetic books of the Old Testament, looking at those together over the next weeks. And we'll be focusing in on our mission focus for September, uh, the work of the Bridge Youth Project next Sunday as well. We're going to come, we're going to pray together. We want to remember in our prayers, and we will later on in the service, those who've lost loved ones recently want to pray as well. And Bill and uh, Morag and the family, our condolence in the loss of our sister Maureen, and we'll be thinking and praying for you much over these next weeks with thankful hearts for the lady that she was. And Lord bless you and comfort you at this time. So let's come, let's pray together as we come in our worship this morning. Father, we want to thank you for uh, the freedom that we have to come and to gather. We want to thank you that we gather together as church family. We can gather together to rejoice in those good things you're doing amongst us and to stand in those difficult times with those who are struggling. So, Lord, come and meet with your people, we pray. Come and meet with us in our worship, whether we're here or at home or even catching up in the week. Lord, we thank you that you're a God that we can call upon. You're a God who knows us and loves us. You're a God who wishes to walk with us. And so, Lord, we ask that we would fall into step with your will and with your work of your Spirit this morning. We pray and ask that faithful God come meet with us today. Lord, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me invite those who are able. We're going to stand to sing of that faithfulness of our God in that wonderful hymn as we begin our worship together. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. 
Great is thy faithfulness again. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. We worship you, dear Lord, for great is your faithfulness. Thank you for your presence in our midst this morning. As we continue to worship, Pray we lift our hearts up unto you. Let's be blessed. Let the blessings of today be ours. And we pray that you shall, you know, encourage our hearts, comfort our souls at this difficult time, especially for, for some amongst us. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Yeah. 
Good morning. It is lovely to be with you. Uh, my name's Hannah, and it is the first Sunday of the month, and we will be sharing about family news today. Um, this is a time to kind of share what the church has been up to and those in the congregation as well. So it's lovely. Thanks for all the photos. So the first photo is some images from the Connect Group socials that happened kind of over the last few months. Um, a lovely time to just um, bond together and share life with one another. And I think the Ladies Book Club had a lovely walk around Old Serum and enjoyed um, some lovely dessert as well. So do you remember the connect groups? Um, Ruth, is around, um, Ruth is the person to speak to or someone on the leadership team. If you'd like to get connected to a connect group, um, do let us know. They're a good time of fellowship and going deeper in God's word. Uh, next photo is share of um, our experience of camp. So over the summer holidays, there were three different camps for our young people to go to. And these are mostly photos from Discovery um, for 13 to 16 year olds to go along to. And we had a great time. The weather was actually pretty good. Um, it was exhausting, but we had lots of fun doing different activities, um, spending time worshiping God, and just building new friendships and praying with one another, which was amazing. So, um, Hear out for next year the dates and maybe booking in for that. Your young people will come in to serve. Uh, so next photos, some celebrations that happened. Um, so Janet shared that her granddaughter, she was very pleased, graduated from uni with a first class honours and is now going to become a social worker. So amazing needs about that. Congratulate Janet. Um, and also, we had a wedding that took place in July. So Sam and Dan, really fun to see you guys get married. Woo! You guys are amazing, and it's lovely having you guys here. Oh, it's great. So those are celebrations. The next one are some achievements that have happened. Uh, so a range of photos. Um, Sarah and Lawrence are sharing, you know, their experience of doing the South West Coastal Walk with us. They've currently done 25% of it, and that was 60 miles. That is impressive, I have to say. Look forward to hearing how you guys go. Maybe we could use it as a fundraiser, you never know. Um, also some pictures from a women's day out, which was lovely. So Wendy Allison and Jenny hit the beach and had a lovely time together. I always say photos of Lily. Lily came third in a jumping competition that she did over the summer. Again, and it was like 15 others that she was up against, and she came third. So could we give Lily a round of applause? <laughs> That's amazing. We look forward to seeing how, how you get on over these next few years. Um, they also had fun in France as well. The next photo is of the image of the church in the park in August. Um, great to see so many people out there. And we had good weather again, which was lovely. I wasn't there, but I know it was really nice. <laughs> so um, look out for, I guess, next year when we do some more services in the park, which will be fun. Our last photo is an image you might have seen last year, uh, last week, <laughs> sorry, um, of Gabby being baptized, uh, which was lovely. So. That was really special to watch and be a part of, and we were really pleased for Gabby. And if you'd like to watch um, the service, please do catch up on YouTube online to watch um, Gabby share her testimony. It's really powerful, so please do that. But it was lovely to watch that. So that is the end of Family News. <laughs> So I'm going to welcome up Wendy to come up with me. So as you, well, the children, it is Move Up Sunday. So it's the start of the academic year. It's the start of our groups changing ever so slightly as they move up. Um, we have got a new group forming. So our youth group is splitting into two groups. Um, and some of the younger ones moving up into their groups. So we just want to share a bit about what they'll be up to, to be praying for them and some other prayer requests as well. So, Wendy's going to share first a bit about King's Kids, and then going to share about the youth group. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. 
Uh, we just want to say that in King's Kids, we have a fun time each week. We do look at the Bible each week. We look at about Bible characters and hear stories from the Old Testament and New Testament, always focusing on Jesus and all that he's done for us and what we can learn from his example uh, for, our, for ourselves. We always have a fun time in the hall. We start off with games uh, to stretch our legs. We pray together, praise together. We make something to take home. Uh, we always take home a memory verse as a reminder of our time together. And today, we're focusing on forgiveness today and remembering that it's the start of a new term and remembering that wherever we go, that Jesus goes with us into school and just to remember that when we go a fresh start, a new leaf, whatever last year was like, today is a new day. Thank you, Wendy. Um, for the youth group, we... Last term, we were kind of looking at the nature of God, and in this term, we are starting afresh. Uh, we will be kind of looking at the values of our youth group and how we create that culture within our youth group together. So Boulders and Mountain Movers is the new name, um, are gonna be sometimes two weeks of the month. Yeah, we'll be together as one group, and then two other Sundays, they'll be separate. So actually, they get time to bond together and hopefully develop one another and then also have time where they can engage with stuff maybe a bit deeper depending on their age range um but this year we're going to be looking at um the spiritual gifts um um gifts of the holy spirit um uh, looking no i said that wrong fruits of the spirit so sorry wrong thing uh looking at the fruits of the spirit and actually how do we walk and live like Jesus and learn from him. And then looking at the bigger picture of the Bible and working our way through that and understanding how it all pieces together and why the Bible is just amazing and this amazing love story um, and just grasping that a bit more as a youth group. So to be praying for those kind of different subjects we're gonna be doing with them. Um, we also wanted to share some prayer requests. So they're gonna come up So we're just going to share them at the start and then me and Wendy are going to pray for those specific prayer points and also get you to go away with one as well. So to be praying for our children and young people as they return to school tomorrow for most of them is when they start and also later in the week as they get a bit older. Um, so just to be praying for God's peace where there might be anxieties or just nerves around going to school. May just God calm those. But also we want to pray for friendships to be formed, but not just for any friendship, but actually to be, they'd be good and encouraging friendships as well. So to be praying particularly for that. Um, and there's lots who are moving up to secondary school or starting in reception. So to be praying spe specifically for those um, children and young people as that's completely new experience for them, that would be great. Uh, I just wanted, I wonder if we can just close our eyes and pray for a minute. Lord Jesus, I just want to ask you to lift up all of those who give their time and care for our young people, for those who give time on a Sunday, and for those who work in local schools and are going back to education, for those who are in the health service, and for those who serve with local charities as well. Father, I just pray that you give them grace and wisdom in all that they do. Enable them to use the right language, enable that courage to speak up and be advocates for you where necessary. Guide them and give them your peace in all that they do. Enable them to bring your presence in every way and to every situation. Amen. Great. Thank you, Wendy. So, yeah, to be praying for our teachers and TAs who will be returning after the summer holidays, just pray for them that they feel refreshed and just understand how valuable they are um, to the children that they work with, but also just to all the parents as well that have their children attend those schools. And also to be praying for the Bridge Youth Project, who will also be starting to go back into schools from this week. So Wendy and Lewis are here, um, good representatives. Um, so do be praying for them as they return, um, greeting those who are new to the school, um, arranging one-to-ones, um, doing group stuff, doing assemblies, just bringing God's love into those schools in Wiltshire. But what we'd love you to do, lots of you might already have 
um, a bookmark kind of similar to this or maybe the old style as well. But there's a particular Bible verse on it that is from Matthew 19, verse 14. And Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And I think we want to um, remember that as we serve our children and young people. Actually, they are so valuable and we never want to stop them hearing about Jesus. And so I'd like to encourage you if you haven't got one of these I've got a few I've got uh, take one before you leave and I'll make new ones next week if we run out but I'd like to challenge you or kind of encourage you at 7 14 either in the morning or the evening to be praying for our children and young people in this church in the schools around us for those teachers and TAs and the bridge youth project I just thought it could be a helpful reminder and actually over these next two weeks in particular, as they start back, to be really intentional in praying for them would be great. So that's your kind of reminder. You can either put it in your book or on your fridge or something like that. But to be remembering to pray for them at 7.14, morning or evening. That's kind of, that's your kind of encouragement to do so. I'm going to pray for our children and young people. Um, as they move up this Sunday, as they return to school, and then we're going to do another song, and then the children and young people will head to group, okay? So if you bow your heads with me, or close your eyes as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are. I thank you for the joy and love and peace that overflows from you, Lord. And we just pray for that to fall upon our children and young people, for them to know your peace, your unfailing love, and um, just for any nerves to settle, Lord. And may they know that you have them in, their, in your hand, Lord. We just pray that they just um, be excited about the return to school and that it will be a really good first day, Lord. And we just pray for this morning as they maybe start new groups, May you just settle those nerves and may it be a fun time and just pray for new friendships to form, Lord, and for them to know who you are more and more, God. We just pray for those teachers and TAs and just the gifts that you have blessed them with. May you just um, encourage them in what they're doing. May you give them the energy and enthusiasm as they start this school term afresh. May you just be with them. May they know your encouragement, Lord. We just pray for this morning and pray for just a fun time. I just pray for us as leaders. May you just give us, with, give us your wisdom. Give us your discernment in how to lead, Lord. Pray you just bless this morning. In your mighty name, amen. Right. So we're going to share in a song. Um, so I'm going to invite the worship band to come up to share. So shall we rise up together? Children and young people, if you want, if you like, you can come and get some instruments and let's worship the Lord together. Every move I make. Every move.
Thank you. For those of you who perhaps are relatively new to SBC, or perhaps you're for the first time each uh, year as a church, we pray and ask God to give us a verse for the year. And you'll see those verses from the last few years that are around on the walls there, and this one here that's our verse for this year together. And each year we look at that verse. Sometimes we do it at the beginning of each term, and so three times a year we'll come and we'll go back to that verse and ask God, what are you saying to us through that verse? How are you encouraging us? And over these last years, it's been great to see the way God has moved for us, the way he's given us his word and enabled us to see that fitting into perhaps where we are, both as a church uh, and as a nation as well together. And what we want to do this morning is we want to do something a little bit different uh, with that verse. Because one of the things we want to do, we've been thinking and already praying in our service this morning. And we've been mentioning the fact that our prayer ministry team are restarting uh, after the service. And so we're going to be inviting you to pray through this verse in different ways together this morning. That verse, if you can't see it, is, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now, if you haven't got that verse, there are just a few left. Uh, you would have got it in your welcome pack or at the beginning of the year. There are a few fridge magnets that are the back there. If you haven't got one, please do take one and uh, think and pray that verse through for the remainder of this year together. But as we look at that verse, the first part of it says to us, let us not become weary in doing good. And just for a moment, I want you to think about this last week. And I want to think about this last week in this way. What good have you done in this last week? What good have you done in this last week? Just dwell on that for a moment. Think on that for a moment in terms of the, how that verse speaks to our hearts and to our lives. <clears throat> Maybe for some of us, we'll say, well, actually, <clears throat> there have been things this week where I can say, yeah, <clears throat> that was good. God enabled me to do this or to do that or enabled me to help in that way with that situation. Maybe some of us, we're saying, well, it wasn't an easy week. It was a difficult week. It was a week where I struggled in terms of being able to do good for God in this week. But don't feel isolated in that because as we read that verse, it says to us, let us, not let you, but let us. It's a collective thing. Paul here, in, in writing this verse to the church in Galatia, he, he's writing it, and he's not saying to them, you do this. He's saying, let us. It's a collective thing. Paul himself is including himself in this. He's saying, let us be those who don't become weary or tired or exhausted in doing good. It was a message that when it first came to the church would have been read to them collectively. It wouldn't be that somebody would have arrived with a letter that as we get letters, well, we don't get letters much these days, but emails or whatever, messages that come directly to us as individuals, come through our door or into our email box, inbox, and we look at them and they say, well, this applies to me. This was a 
letter that was to read to all of the church, not just one churches, but the churches in the area of Galatia. It was a collective message that Paul was bringing from God to his people. And in that collective nature, it reminds us that one of the things we need to do is that we need to encourage one another to help one another to do good. But how? Because it's easy to say that, but how can we do that? How can we encourage one another not to grow tired in doing good? Well, firstly, I think there's a, there's a value that Paul puts in making the message to all. He's saying that each and every person that this message comes to in the church has a value because they have a part to play in doing this collective good for God. One of the things that's been a joy for us as a church over these last months is that we've had a number of new people who've come and joined with us, been visiting us, and we've been welcoming and so on. But I got quite upset last Sunday because we had a number of new people in, and as I was looking out, as somebody came to the door at the back at the end where I usually sort of hang around and say hi, I turned to somebody and looked at them and thought, are you here for the first time? And as I said it, I realized they weren't. And it's one of those things as pastor you really don't want to do. And I, I was quite upset afterwards that these people had been once before and I realized that, but I'd sort of, the words were out of my mouth before I said it. And I thought uh, it was a missed opportunity there to recognize somebody and to say, look, it's good to see you again to make them feel welcome, to make them feel valued this morning as they came in. We need to recognize this message is coming to all of us because all of us have a value in God's kingdom and in His church. But we are who we are. And sometimes we, we, we forget, don't we? We forget names particularly. I, I am useless. It's not a great thing, not a great thing not to have as a pastor. I am really poor on names. Okay, sometimes I forget my kids' names. All right? I always remember the dog, but no, you know, I mean, you know, I'm not great on names. It's really great to have a wife who is fantastic at remembering people's names. When was a teacher and she could reel off the kids in her class going back over the years when she used to teach, which was quite a while ago now. But she can remember names really well. But I'm just useless. I look at her face and maybe, but names, no, nah, not nah, really good on that. And so this morning I thought it'd be great. We, we, I asked you to put a label on this morning. Not because I thought you were really forgetful. <clears throat> but I thought it'd be good to have a, a label on this morning. Because now you have this opportunity. Some of you have sort of like over the summer, you know, you've either been away or some new folks have come in. And maybe you're sort of thinking... Oh, no, and I have met that person before, but I can't remember their name, but I'm sure they told me the first time I met them what their name was. And then you have that embarrassment, don't you? And you try really hard, don't you, to sort of like do this thing of, now tell me your name so I don't have to ask again. But they don't, do they? Because they assume you're going to remember. And then, you know, and then... You sort of think, oh, it's too embarrassing now. I've met them twice and I can't remember what their name is. Well, now you haven't got any excuse at all because they got a label on. So unless you've got appallingly bad handwriting like mine and you can't read that label, okay, you now know the names of the people around you. So the golden rule is the first time you come into contact with somebody, use their name three times as quickly as you can and then hopefully it'll log in your memory. We're going to be using those names in a moment. It is a point to what we're doing. We need to remember to value everyone because it's a message that comes to us all. We also need to be those who remember as well to help everyone because at times we all get weary. We get weary because we're busy. Maybe for, for you, you've had an opportunity you know somebody who's perhaps in a really busy situation and an opportunity to help, an opportunity to offer help to them. The one thing I would say about that is, if you're on the receiving end of that, receive it with grace. We can be very British about it. Can I help you? Oh, certainly not. Do you know what I mean? My gran, who I love dearly, was of the generation 
where, when she grew up was she was still of the generation where they used to scrub the front step. Now, those who are nodding, you're of a certain age where you remember this, okay? You're not, if you're too young to know this, there was an age where people used to go out, usually on a Monday morning, and they would scrub the front step. And I used to say to my gran, why did you do that? And she said, oh, well, that way then I could talk to the neighbors. And I said, well, couldn't you talk to them the rest of the week? Oh, that would mean inviting them in. <laughs> you didn't do that. You know, and some of you remember those times where the front room was only reserved for special visitors. Remember that? It was great as a pastor. It was one of the real perks. You got to go in the front room of older people who would never let anyone else in there. It was great. You used to get invited into the important room. It was great. It was fantastic, you know? But we're not very good at doing that. I can remember when Wendy and I were, we, we had uh, our two kids, so they're about sort of 18 months apart. So when we had the second one, somebody in church came to us and said, um, can, I, can I offer to do some help? something to help you. And we were like, oh, no, I don't know what to do. And he said, look, you know, I, I said, I, I'm, I can't do anything with the kids. I'm useless with kids. He said, but I can help you. And I was thinking, I have no idea what I should. I'll come and do your ironing. Well, this was a real joy to us because Wendy and I hadn't ironed ever since we'd been married. <laughs> so this was fantastic. You know, it's the only time in my life where we had things that are ironed. You know what I mean? It was great. You know, I thought, well, I'm an iron, and just, to me, that's just a complete waste of time. Do you know what I mean? You know, so, you know, I mean, I have actually turned up in church before now. I actually went to a funeral once, went in the cupboard, looked at my shirt, thought, I haven't got time to iron it, so ironed the front of it, and then just did the jacket up. The rest of it had creases everywhere, but the front of it looked really good. Do you know what I mean? It's good. But anyway, they, they, they said, they said oh, I, I, well, I'll come and do the ironing. And for a year, this lady turned up once a week and did our ironing for us. God bless her. Because we were never going to get that done. It was never going to happen. And you know the amount of like, stuff that kids produce when they're little, in terms of clothes and whatever. It was just fantastic. But that was what she said. She said, I can't help you with this. Can't help with that. But I can do the ironing. I know whatever it is, let's be those who help those who are busy. Let's be those who encourage those who are discouraged. But to do that, we've got to be honest. And again, as church, we're not often great at that, are we? Are we? You know, the number of you I went to the door for about five minutes this morning as people were coming in, and all of you were like, you've all had really good weeks, and it's all been really good this week, and it's all been really nice. Because that's what you told me on the way in. Now, I know some of you have, so it's fine. Do you know what I mean? But, I mean, let's be honest. Sometimes we can be those who have difficult times. We can be discouraged. We can have our ups and downs in life like everybody else. Let's be those who encourage those who are discouraged and encourage those who are encouraged to be encouraged. And what about those who maybe say, well... Do you know, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not weary because I'm over busy. I'm not weary because I'm discouraged. I'm weary because I'm not convinced that what I'm doing produces results. You know, I've tried my best in work or in family or in neighborhood or on my front line to be fruitful, but nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And maybe we feel like that. Maybe we feel, well, you know, I just don't feel that I'm being fruitful where I am. And that's a wearying thing. It can be tiring to keep going when we seem in there not seeing fruit for our labor. And so what we're going to do this morning is I'm going to invite you to go into groups of four. For those who are able to do this, there's a few people who might not be able to do this this morning, but for those of you, I'm going to invite you to go to groups of four. And the, the only way we're going to do this is if you sort of like enter in. Okay? So I'm going to stand at the front and watch. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to go into groups of four, and you need to have one person in your group of four, at least one person in your group of four, that if you're really honest, you don't know that well. 
you're going to need to perhaps look at the label to know what their name is, okay? And some of you are looking at me as if to say, that's really taking me out of my comfort zone. I know, okay? And I'm going to ask you just to do this, just to pray that people in their busyness and sometimes their discouragement and sometimes their weariness about not seeing the fruit, that God blesses them where they are. And you might say, well, how can I do that? You might even say to me, you know, I've never been in a situation where I've prayed out loud for anyone before. Your prayer can be as simple as this. Lord, I offer to you, you've got three other people in the group. They've all got labels on. You just need to name them. Okay? I pray for one, two, three, amen. That's all you need to say. So if you've never prayed out loud before, Lord, I offer to you one, two, three, amen. Okay? For those of you who are used to praying and praying out loud, don't pray long this morning because it puts off the people who are only going to pray one sentence. Okay? So don't go for your long prayers this morning. We're keeping these short. Okay? So groups of four, let's pray for one another that we encourage one another not to become weary in doing good. When you get together, we're not going to share what we're, where we're at. You know, we're not going to have a long conversation about talking about what's happening in the summer. We're just going to get straight into the praying. So I'm going to give you, okay, one minute to get into your groups of four. So the first thing we're going to do is, for those who are able, we're going to ask you to stand, okay? So you're already on your feet. You can move around from one side of the church to the other. You've got one minute to get into a group of four. Then I'm going to call you to prayer, okay? So ready, steady, go. Get into your group of four this morning, please. Okay, so vaguely you're in a group of four, okay? So what you need to do now is you're going to start praying when I count you down from five, okay? You're going to start praying, and you've got basically four minutes, which means that none of your prayers need to be lower than one minute long. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one, start praying.
Father, hear the praise that we're offering for one another now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, please take your seats. If you like the people that you are with more than the people you are sitting next to, you can stay with them. <coughs> they might notice the people that you will move next to, but you know. Before we knock the, knock the next clause, let me say, for those people that you are in a group, see if you can remember their names and pray for them this week. That they aren't weary in doing good in this week ahead. We're going to come, we're going to sing and worship the Lord together. We're going to remember through that song that speaks to us of that famous psalm, Psalm 23, of a God who meets us and takes us into green pastures, but also walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. So let's stand and let's sing of our shepherd God in Jesus Christ. Shepherd of the world, he makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. He still has restored my soul. I will trust in you, Lord, and I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will be. Guides my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup is overflows with joy. I feast on His blood. And I will trust in you, Lord. And I will trust in you, Lord. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead.
Jesus did that thing for me. That verse goes on to say, for at the proper time, you will reap a harvest. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest. Some of you will have seen in the news this week uh, that this last week was the uh, 80th uh, anniversary of this famous uh, speech of Dr. Martin Luther King, that I have a dream speech uh, that he spoke to thousands in Washington uh, on that uh, very hot day where there was the march for civil rights to the Capitol. And he spoke uh, at the end, uh, following many others who spoke on that day, that famous speech that some of you will know and know well. And in it is that clause that most of us have heard. I have a dream that my little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Famous words spoken powerfully on that day back 60 years ago. But as many reflected in those 60 years now, that dream that King spoke of is still an unrealized dream for many. And maybe as some were reflecting in that this week, maybe as we look at this verse, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest, maybe for some of us, we are frustrated by unrealized dreams. That we see that God's timing is not our timing. And we struggle, don't we, because we live in a world that screams to us of instant answers and instant gratification. And we desire to live not in times of hardship, but in times of harvest. And maybe for us, as we think of that proper time, God's time, when we will reap a harvest, we're saying, why isn't it now? Paul, in a different letter to the church at Romans, writes these words. We also rejoice in our sufferings. It's not going to be a strap line that's going to get on social media this week, is it? But that's Scripture. That's God's Word to us. We rejoice in our sufferings because we know that sufferings produce perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And there's a commodity that our world desperately needs. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. God's time isn't our time because He's God and we're not. Maybe for us, as we think about that verse, we would say, well, I want to move from the place of hardship to the place of harvest. And God is saying, we need to have patience. We need to wait on His perfect timing. So rather in groups now, we're going to just take a few moments to be where we are on our own, to be quiet before God this morning, to again be honest with Him in some of the frustrations that maybe we feel when we want things to happen and they haven't, when we want things to happen now and they don't when we feel that our prayers are not answered in the way that we would want them to be. Let's bring those frustrations to God. But let's be honest enough to hear His Spirit. That if you're a believer here this morning, dwells within us. Let's hear God out and what His response is to us.
to take a few moments to be quiet in prayer this morning. Father, hear the prayers we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue to worship as we sing together and as we remember what God is doing. He's building His church. It's not complete. He's making us into the people He wants us to be. Let's stand to sing. every praise. Worthy of every song we would ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus. 
Jesus, the only one we could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. So we come to the last part of our verse for the year. If we do not give up. I had a little bit of a, a strange week this week um, because we were taking a couple of days off that is towards the end of this, this week. And so unusually for me, I, I tried to put my preparation to the first part of the week which isn't my usual pattern. I'm usually still playing around with things on a, on a Saturday and looking and, and so on. But I, I, I'd sort of come to this and I had an illustration I was going to use for this particular part of the, uh, <coughs> the verse, if we do not give up. But then on Wednesday night before we went away, I went to boot camp. You know, I'm sort of fairly obsessed by this because I rock on about it quite a lot. Uh, and I was there with doing these exercises out on Hudson's Field with all these other mad people. Uh, and they asked us to go into groups of four. That's where I got the idea from for the prayer. Do you know what I mean? So we were in groups of four. And you were being asked to do four different exercises. I need things very simple. Okay? So you had to go to four different places to do four different exercises. And then you swapped around on, on the minute on the minute, on the minute, on the minute. So the, the first set exercise was relatively easy. So it was just basically 28 explosive star jumps in a minute. That was the one you were going to do, and you were going to blast it as quick as you could, and then you got a bit of a rest. Because the second one that you had to do was one lap of the, the, the thing that they'd marked out for you, and six burpees, which took longer, and you could just get it in inside the minute. And then the third one was 
grabbing some weight equipment and doing, I think it was 18 down and ups with the weights. So you're just hitting the floor and getting them above your head and hitting the floor and getting them beyond. You get that in a minute. And then the fourth one, which was the one that I was finishing on, so I'd done my sort of one minute, I'd done my one minute, I'd done my one minute. I just want to say, at that point, I was 40 minutes into this exercise set up, okay? When he was, this was the warm down, okay? So we'd already blasted for 40 minutes, and now we were going to be doing this as sort of like the warm down. So we, I did my minute, I did my minute, I did my minute, and then the last one was basically this exercise. So there were a set of weights that were on the floor, and basically all you had to do was stand like that for one minute and hold them out, okay? Now, the problem I have with doing this is I'm 55 and I think I'm 25. And I'm quite competitive when it comes to sport. So when I ran into the group that I was joining to do this, I ran in, the guy in front of me was holding out 10 Ks worth of weights. So I just thought, no problem. <laughs> so I hit this thing, got these 10. Uh, after about 30 seconds, I'm beginning to regret my decision. Because I'm holding these weights out thinking, it was really stupid because there's like really lighter weights on the floor in front of me that I could have chosen. But my competitive nature thinks if he could do it, so could I. So fine, I do this, think great, fantastic, we're done. When he turns around, the guy who's doing the instruction thing was obviously having a bad week because he said, we're going to do it again. Okay? So I then went back to the one I started with, minute, 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 came back in, same guy is it in the 10K weights he's holding out, and I'm thinking, do I go for this again? So I pick him up again. This time is even harder, because now I've done all these exercises and my arms are burning. It's at that point, in the middle of Hudson's Field, at about 10 to eight, I'm holding these plates out, and this guy's counting down and going, you know, 30 seconds to go. I start praying the verse for the year, <laughs> right? Honestly, I'm standing on Hudson's Field going, if we do not give up in order to keep these plates out in front of me. And I'm sort of thinking, oh, do you know, this is like really hard work, but I'm going to do it again. So I get to the end of it and think, I've done it. Fantastic, great, there we are. There's my illustration for Sun. When the instructor goes, we're gonna go again. Third time around. That point I run in and I looked at the plates and went, I'm not doing that again. 5K, that's fine, I can manage that during the last one on. But it made me think, and it made me think about this. There is in this verse that condition. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap the harvest. That's the prize. But the condition is, if we do not give up. If we do not give up. And that's much harder, isn't it? Because the first time I did that, it was all right. I was fine. Because I only thought I was going to do it once. But the second time of doing it, I knew how much it was going to hurt. And I didn't want to go again. And maybe we're like that here this morning. Where we're saying, well, look, I've done this before, and I know it hurts. I don't want to do it again. And God is saying to us, the condition of the harvest, the prize, is that we don't give up. And maybe you're saying to yourself, like I was saying on Hudson's Field this week at boot camp, do you know, I just can't do this myself. I just can't keep going. And I just want to encourage you that if you're like that this morning, here this morning, God knows that. God's not shocked by the fact that sometimes we struggle in life in doing what he calls us to do. But what God says to us, not only does he know, but he's prepared for that. It doesn't come as a surprise when we sometimes struggle 
to do what God calls us to do. But what God says to us is not only do I know, and not only am I prepared, but I'll also empower you to keep going. In a different letter, a letter to the church at Philippi, Paul says this to the believers, I can do everything not in and of my own strength. I can't just keep going at boot camp. Eventually, you tire. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. God will empower us in our weakness by his Spirit to do that which he calls us to. So what I'm going to ask you to do as we're wrapping things up this morning is I'm going to ask you to go back into a group. But this time I'm going to ask you to go into a different group. Okay? So this time, this time we're going to go into groups where you need to be with at least one person that you didn't pray with in the first group. Does that make sense? So find some another group. So I'm going to get you to stand up Get into your groups, and then I'll tell you what you're going to do when you're in those groups before you start praying. So go and find a couple of other people or a completely new group. Okay, so you're in those groups together, and this is what I want you to do, okay? You have got, okay, two minutes, so that's 30 seconds each, okay? Just to say to the people who are in your group, this is the situation that I find myself in that I feel like sometimes giving up on, okay? Now, some of you are looking at me and saying, well, that's quite hard. We need to be honest with each other in church. We need to be honest that sometimes we struggle. Because in sharing those struggles, we encourage one another. So you've got 30 seconds when I count you down in a moment for just to say this is the circumstance. You don't have to go into great detail. You might just say it can be something to do with family or it can be something to do with work or it can be something to do with home or whatever it is, you just share something where you say, Do you, know, you know, I started this year where I said I was going to read my way through the Bible and I've stopped. It can be whatever it is that you, is on your heart that you're just saying, as we were talking, as we were thinking, as I was picking those weights up, you're thinking, yeah, that's the thing I want to give up on. But I know that I shouldn't, okay? And so you're going to have 30 seconds each to say that, Okay? And then at the end of that two minutes, I'm just going to shout, pray. And all you need to do in those groups is to pray for somebody else in that group. That's you've got badges on, so you can know their name, and you can just say, I'm going to pray for so-and-so and their family. Amen. Okay? And you have two minutes to do that. Okay? So you might say, Pete, do you know, you, that, you're making me really uncomfortable in church this morning. Okay? To be honest in a nice, gracious way. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Because I think we need to pray together. The other option is, if you don't want to do this, I will see you at Monday, more, uh, Monday evening at boot camp, 7 o'clock. It's got to be better than that, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, counting it down, 5 to 1. When I get to 1, 30 seconds each, something you're going to give up on, share it in a group. Then I'm going to shout after two minutes, pray. Then you pray, 30 seconds each to pray around that as well. Pray for somebody by name, what they're doing. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one.
Okay, let's start praying for one another and praying into those situations. So let's pray together in those groups. Father, hear the praise that we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. very gracious to me. I've been quite mean to you this morning, so thank you for bearing with me. Do appreciate it. I trust that won't mean that you all won't be here next Sunday. You'll all be watching online. I will notice, okay? I won't do that to you next week, I promise. But in all seriousness, if we're going to take these verses for what they are, God's truth to us, what God says to us as a church, we prayed about this, we thought about this. We invited God to say to us, what will you give us for this coming year? We need to be those who are not spectators of God's Word, but participants in what He's calling us to do and to be. We need to be real. We need to enter in. And you need to allow that Word to transform and to change our hearts and to change our lives. In a few moments, we're going to sing our final song of worship together. And in it, it says these words, The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness, 
and rejoicing. For in my need his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. As I invite the group to come back up, John's going to come and lead us in our prayers for the church and for the nation. And then we're going to sing that hymn to close. Do you know, so often we all have a, a burden and a weight on our shoulders. And it's only right that we come before God to pray about these things and give them to God. So shall we pray together? I am trusting you, Lord Jesus. You have died for me. Trusting you for full salvation. Great and free. Father God, what a privilege it is to know you as our King and to know you by walking alongside us in our lives. You came to this earth and sacrificed your life for us. You died and rose again. We thank you for all that you have done for us and walking alongside us all the time. We thank you that you reign supreme and that you forgive us our sins. Lord, help us to trust in your mighty name. Help us to rely on you when life gets tough. And know that you can deal with the issues we bring before you this morning. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. Lord, there are many people we need to bring before you today, those who are suffering with bereavement. We especially pray for Bill and the family as they mourn the loss of Moyne, such a kind, loving and caring person. We as a church family loved her so much. Bless Bill. Be with him over the next few weeks as he will have much to sort out. We also pray for Anne Roper's family and the Latham family as they prepare, prepare for funerals coming up this month. Lord, we lift all those who are sad at this time of the year, missing loved ones who have gone to be with you. I am trusting you to guide me. You alone shall lead, every day and hour supplying all my needs. We pray for our young people, for those who are starting school, those who have had a great summer break and are not looking forward to returning to school. But Lord, we especially pray for those young people who are starting at secondary school. Many are so scared and worried about all the different ways that secondary school works. Give them your presence, Lord, and reassurance that you will be with them every step of the way. Bless them, Lord. We also remem remember our mission focus this month. We pray for all the work that the bridge is doing in the local schools. We pray for Wendy and Lewis working for the bridge, that the teams that they go to in the schools can share the love of Jesus to not only the children but also the staff members of each school. Lord God, we pray especially for those within our fellowship who are suffering with illness, those who are receiving treatment via hospitals and our doctor's surgeries. We pray for Richard Hoffman, for Paul Barnard, and for Robin Scott, all undergoing chemo. Be with them, Lord, and again, let them know your presence and healing hand. Enrich those who continue to suffer with illness, with anxiety, and especially those experiencing challenging times. We also think of those in our family who have loved ones who are suffering during this time. We pray for Johnny's mum, who has been unwell. We think of those who are suffering with anxiety. Lord, especially bless those who are struggling during this time, we bring before you, Lord, our families within the church, that you will be ever present with them. I am trusting you for power. You can, yours can never fail. 
words which you yourself has given must prevail. We pray for the refugees that are coming across the channel in boats, risking their lives, hoping to find freedom and security for a better life away from turmoil, wars and unrest as they flee the country they have left. We pray for our government and Prime Minister. We offer this government to you this morning and pray again for wisdom and guidance. Lord, help those who are worried about paying for food above and paying for heating as well. We all face this as the winter comes to us. Help us as Christians and as a church to offer support in whatever way we can. We thank you for the Trust of Trust, for all that they do to help people who need locally and throughout the country. We pray that you will continue to encourage folks to su support and to trust so families can live a life without being hungry. We thank you for the blessings of this service, that it provides an opportunity to connect and have fellowship with one another, and more importantly, connect with you. Father, we are truly blessed this morning to be here, and we pray for all our fellow worshippers and families of this church. We especially pray for those online, those that may be watching later on in the week. Lord God, we want to be a focus in these difficult times, we rejoice for your love, your patience and your kindness, and above all your presence. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus. Never let me fall. I am trusting you forever and for all. Amen. Sing our closing hymn, Yet Not I through Christ in me. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven not to be. He is my joy. Oh uh -huh. 
bread. I long to follow Jesus, for He has said that He will bring me home, and day by day I know He will be near me until I stand. So let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. But as we've sung, Father, thank you, there comes a time where that harvest will be brought in. And in the words of Dr. King, we will indeed be free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us this morning. Come and meet us downstairs for tea and coffee. If you've got children, go and collect them from the groups downstairs. And we look forward to seeing you tonight in the week ahead or next Sunday.